Now, John, do you want to take point on this? Because Night Dive is suggesting something very, very oh, yeah. interesting. You're the Night Dive guy on the team, and uh, it's it's a really interesting idea. Yeah, so Stephen Kick on Twitter sort of kicked around this idea. Ah, uh, see what I did there? Um, <laughs> that uh, what if they explored releasing patches for games that they couldn't, that they were unable to, I guess, legally develop for? By legally, I mean, it's not illegal to develop patches for it. It's more like they could not distribute these games as the as a new product, right? Some of these old games get caught up in like legal limbo. Who the heck owns the IP? Maybe it's split between a bunch of companies and they just can't figure it out. I mean, that's one of the biggest challenges of bringing back old games. We know that. But they propose this idea of running a Patreon service, well, a Patreon, where essentially people are uh, donating to this Patreon to fund development of what are essentially like fan patches, if you will, to bring mm. some of these games up to modern standards, kind of, you know, the idea would be you, they would produce these patches, but there's, those patches would not include the original games. That's up to the user to source, right? Which yeah. puts them in the clear as far as like legal things are concerned, right? They can drop this sort of patch. That's no problem as long as it doesn't include any of the original assets, code, whatever. Uh, I think it's an interesting idea and it's actually, it's not too far removed from what we've seen with like, uh yotego's patreon although that is perhaps less legal i would say because you know it's but what they're doing there is literally going in and rewriting or preserving arcade boards by implementing them into fpga right and they run a patreon for that as well and that's basically allowed them to save and create like digital copies of arcade board chips that you can use elsewhere right so this is kind of a similar thing, but without any of the gray area, because it would just be releasing a completely uh, legal leave okay patch. Mm -hmm. Now, how, how this would work in practice, whether people would tolerate it, because you're essentially spending money to invest in this potential future thing, right? And uh, you, that can get a little bit awkward sometimes, but I still think it's something worth pursuing, and I would like to see them tackle it because maybe that would really help. I don't know if they have plans for something like, say, No One Lives Forever, right? I'm sure they've yeah. wanted to do it. I don't know anything about that, but imagine if that was a game where they're like, yeah, we really want to get this game out there again, make it playable, but we can't do it officially. Let's develop this patch for it. And then suddenly you have like a source port, or not not even a source port, like a some sort of method that they create that allows you to play these games on modern hardware in a way that's more acceptable. Uh, mm -hmm. Who could say no to that, right? Right. Mm -hmm. I, uh, for me, I would really love to see if they do do this. They they already have work done on id tech uh, one and two now, and I would love right, to see them true. broaden that out to all the games that used id tech one and two. So, Hexen uh, two got yeah Hexen two. That's what I was talking about. Sorry, Hexen two, uh, a game that hasn't been touched in a long time. And if you load it up right now, it loads just as much as GL Quake would. You know, like fine but you know having that in the same state that we see like quick to remastered in would be really great i think mm -hmm. unreal was another title that was oh my muted. god yeah yeah that would you be... know there's no way there's no way epic actually touches given that game uh again. yeah tim's no. comments recently no. and just the way his mannerisms lately i feel like he's not interested in ever resurfacing <laughs> unreal one mm -hmm. but do you want to yeah. play unreal tournament 2k or unreal tournament 3 john on steam can buy that if you want i mean that, that's me being not, it's not the same as unreal it's not no. the same <laughs> yeah i would <sighs> love to see unreal or Un unreal 2k4 also like they could spice up even like those games or even I mean, unreal to be Tournament. fair like, it's not even just unreal there are ways to play these games obviously still and there's some decent like sort of patches made for them but i would like to see something a little more robust mm -hmm. okay Right. Interesting idea, though. I don't know the legal ramifications of it, but it would be fascinating to see, uh, first of all, what the sort of uh, amount of money required is to make this happen, because Night Dive aren't, you know, I, I can't I don't think they're going to be cheap, are they? Their mm. development resources are, are going to, you know, require a certain amount of, of, of money to make all of this stuff happen to the kind of quality you'd expect from a Night Dive title, right? But it's certainly an interesting idea, and I do wonder whether they'll push ahead with it, possibly on a title that's less contentious. Yeah, I, I suspect that's probably right. Mm -hmm. 
but the thing, fascinating. The thing I've gathered from talking with these guys and like interviews and stuff before is like I really they really do genuinely seem to care a lot about this stuff, preserving this stuff. Yes. I mean Stephen of course does, but then you have like you know, like like Samuel, right? Uh yeah. Kaiser as you S V Kaiser. I mean that's what th- this was what he was doing before he even started a night dive with like Doom sixty four EX and like he cares about this stuff and he wants to bring it back. And I think that's great. And this is probably the only way that certain titles can ever be worked on again in some capacity like this. Right. So, Sounds I awesome. I hope it, I hope this becomes a thing 